Hello and welcome to another month of Azure Databricks with Advancing Analytics. So today we're looking at how you take data that's already in Databricks and you get it into Azure SQL Data Warehouse, which is the massively parallel processing service that is your core relational database in a large scale warehouse. And it's a little bit funny in terms of how you have to work with it to get the performance that you really need. So let's have a bit of a recap. SQL Data Warehouse has got a couple of different layers, and the top two layers are very similar to what we've been looking at in Databricks. You've got that top brain layer, and in Data Warehouse this is called a control node. And then you've got several different worker layers underneath. These are your compute nodes. So similar to our driver and workers in Spark, we have a control node and compute nodes. So when we're scaling SQL Data Warehouse up and down, we simply change the number of compute nodes, and that gives us our scale. Now we also have this idea of distributions, which are our relational data stores. That's what stores the actual data in the warehouse. And there are always 60, so 60 distributions. But that doesn't actually affect how we get data into it. All we care about is that driver node and the worker node. So when we're trying to get data into the warehouse, what actually happens? Well, if we're using any traditional way of inserting data, so using BCP, using SSIS, it's going to hit the control node. So any attempts to just regularly insert data go through the control node at the top, which means they get bottlenecked. We don't take advantage of all the parallelism of all those different compute nodes, so it doesn't matter how much we've scaled it up if it's always going in through that front door, through that control node. So we need to go a different direction. We need to make figure out how we use the compute nodes to pull the data in rather than pushing it. So we need something like this. So if you're using SQL Data Warehouse normally and you're trying to get data from blob storage or a data lake, you can use a thing called Polybase. Now each of those compute nodes has its own Polybase readers. So it's so many threads that allow you to access flat file data and pull it onto the warehouse itself. And this is the only scalable way, the only fast way to load data into a warehouse. So ideally, we need to do the same approach. We've got our data in a data frame in Databricks, and we need to figure out how we get those compute nodes to pull the data in for us. Now, luckily, there's actually a built-in way of doing this. So we can take our data frame, we can push that out into a staging layer, so we have an intermediary data layer, and then we pull it into the compute nodes from there. Now, this is actually built in for us. So there is a Spark driver for Spark SQL Data Warehouse, which is built in that will allow you to use this staging. So as long as you tell it where that intermediary layer is, it'll automatically land the data as flat files, create those external tables for us, and suck it up into that SQL Data Warehouse. So the syntax for doing that is fairly straightforward. We've got our normal data frame dot write function. Uh, we're passing the format as that spark.sqldw driver. So that tells it how to do it, how to interact, tells it that it needs to know to use the language that Data Warehouse is expecting. It's got some connection details. And then really importantly, I've got that temp directory and the uh, Azure storage credentials, meaning I can actually set up that intermediary layer. I can set up the blob storage so it can land those flat files. It knows how to connect and it's passing the details through. And then actually it'll create external table objects. So it's going to create an external table. It'll create our actual end destination table. And then when the data load is finished, it'll delete that external table that is created. However, there is one word of warning. That intermediary data layer, it won't clean that down itself. So we need to be a little bit careful to make sure that if we're doing repeated loads, we're actually going and cleaning up the blob store in the middle. It's fine to leave it for a little while, but just be aware there'll be a cost associated for letting those temporary files build up. The other thing to note is that if there's any kind of problem, so if the data doesn't fit, if there's an error on the SQL Data Warehouse side, that won't bubble back up into Databricks. Databricks will just tell you there's been an error and you need to go and have a look in SQL Data Warehouse, have a look at that DMPDW errors DMV, and that'll tell you what's going on there. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. And don't forget to like and subscribe so we can keep doing this. And we'll see you next time.